One in 50 of us are living with unruptured aneurysms at this moment. People often refer to them as ticking time bombs. We take you inside the science and the lives of people living with them. We're gonna roll them out. Will, if you'll get a spoon, please. Cynthia Meisner, a nurse and married mom of three boys, doesn't know Patricia Artis, a colon cancer survivor and grandmother, doesn't know Juanita Alford, a wife and doting grandmother, doesn't know George Cawley. But here they are, in exam rooms next to each other, strangers brought together for the same reason. Just want an answer as quick as possible. I found out what I came here to find out. <laughs> the anxiety of thinking about it now has, you know, become kind of overwhelming. Well, of course, it was very scary. It was extremely unexpected. All have been told they have or may have aneurysms. What was the manifestation of her hemorrhage? What, what, what happened? They said it was a hypertensive emergency. It was incidentally discovered during a workup for what is just probably just vertigo. The head of Emory Neurosurgery. Hello. Dr. Hi. Dan Barrow. Do? I'm Dan Barrow. Very nice to meet you, Ms. Alford. Hello. How do you do? I'm Dan Barrow. Very nice to meet you. Hello. Hello. How do you do? I'm good. I'm Dan Barrow. Here we are again. Good to see you again. An aneurysm is merely a weak spot on the wall of an artery that is ballooned out. No, nobody really knows why people get them. We don't really know why people get aneurysms. We know they're more common in women than men. We don't know why that is. About 15% of people that have aneurysms have a very strong family history. Tell me, in your own words, uh, what your symptoms were when you went into the emergency room with this headache. Cynthia Beisner had the worst headache of her life. Juanita Alford's aneurysm was found when she was being treated for vertigo. George Cawley's was a scan for something else. Same with Patricia Artis, whose two aneurysms were found three years ago during cancer treatment. This is the large aneurysm, uh, and this is a picture from 2015 when it was first diagnosed. We know that it's gotten bigger now. The smaller aneurysm is here, a little more difficult to see. She has been in this exam room a half dozen times, weighing her decision. Doing nothing, I'm concerned, may be the, 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 the biggest risk because of the change that we've seen in your aneurysm. But in many cases, doing nothing, monitoring the aneurysm with regular scans is one of three main options. And there was a day and a time when the only way you knew a patient had an aneurysm is if it ruptured and bled and they came to the hospital with a ruptured aneurysm because we didn't have the ability to do CAT scans and MRIs and CT angiography and MR angiography. Uh, and so the presumption was these must be terribly dangerous because the only time we ever see them is when they've ruptured and bled. Just because we can treat something doesn't mean we should treat it because the treatment has risks. The truth is that 50 to 80 percent of all aneurysms never rupture during the course of a person's lifetime, meaning many of us live and die with aneurysms and never know. But it's difficult to predict if or when an aneurysm will rupture. 30,000 people in the United States suffer a brain aneurysm rupture every year. For 40% of those people, that rupture is fatal. An aneurysm is a time bomb. It will go off. You just never know when. Do you believe that about the one in your brain? I think so. Dr. Barrow recommends that Juanita Alford get an arteriogram, a more detailed imaging test that uses x-rays and a special dye to see inside the arteries. He recommends the same thing to Cynthia Meisner. The concern I have is, is elevated somewhat because of the symptoms that you had, this sudden onset of what you describe as the worst headache of your life. Because missing a small hemorrhage from an aneurysm uh, is, is, is a no-no. Because if we miss that, um, the next hemorrhage may not, may not be a, a mild one. George Cawley is the lucky one today. I think if you're comfortable, I think getting a follow-up scan in a year would be a, a very good way to monitor this to be sure that nothing's changing that would make it more worrisome um, and maybe put all of our minds at, at ease. Yeah, that's what I would rather do than doing anything invasive or anything right now. I would agree with you. Yeah. 
The other options for treating aneurysm are surgery and endovascular coiling. Surgery is where an opening is made in the skull. Under an operating microscope, a small clip is placed across the base or neck of the aneurysm to block the normal blood flow from entering. The clips remain permanently. The other option, endovascular coiling, is where a catheter is placed in the femoral artery in the groin, then guided up into the artery containing the aneurysm. A microcatheter goes into the aneurysm through which coils made of soft platinum metal are released. The coils prevent blood from getting into the aneurysm. They remain permanently as well. For Patricia Artis, it's time. She chooses surgery. I don't want to keep living day to day with that anxiety. And one promise I can make is it will take really good care of you. I'm dependent on that. <laughs> this is at the time of surgery. The smaller anterior communicating artery is being exposed. The blue arrows point to the optic nerves, the yellow to the carotid artery, the green to the anterior cerebral artery, and the red to the aneurysm. Now the clip is being placed on the anterior communicating artery aneurysm and slowly closed. That clip now has eliminated the aneurysm from the normal circulation. A pair of micro scissors is used to open the aneurysm to be sure that it is completely clipped and that no blood is getting into it from the circulation. It's a philodendron in there. It's almost unbelievable how good I was from the surgery. Four months later, Artis is living her life, thinking of other things besides her now gone aneurysm. Life is really good. Excellent. Absolutely excellent. Juanita Alford needed time to think, but it was a conversation with her seven-year-old grandson that moved her forward. He said, Nana, are you going to die? Which totally shocked me. And I said, well, sure, honey, we all have to die, but Nana's not planning to die soon. And uh, he said, well, I just want you to know, Nana, when you die, I will miss you. He said, but, um, you will be able to see me. Her arteriogram showed three aneurysms, two only treatable by surgery and not suitable for coiling. She's deciding whether or not to proceed with coiling of the largest one and monitor the smaller ones. I go to bed every night praying that I'll make it through the night. And I wake up in the morning thanking God that I did. Uh, I think there's only 10 coming today. Okay, set the timer now for about 12 minutes. Cynthia Meisner's arteriogram showed an aneurysm. She chose surgery. During surgery, Dr. Barrow discovered her aneurysm indeed had bled at the time she experienced that severe headache that led to its discovery. He called George and he said, it is a miracle. And he said, it is so good she decided to do this. There are things we cannot predict, decisions that are hard to make. All carry risk, but also reward. So we've got plans to travel and do some things, and the thought of not being able to spend time with my family just was really an eye-opener.